the chaotic, the messy and fun kitchen preparation to impress the master chef. Will you accept the challenge in Sweet Mess Pastry Competition? And today we'll be teaching you how to play Sweet Mess Pastry Competition. Game designed by Johnny Pack, Yoma and Antonio Zacks and published by Fantasia Games who picked up and continued the production of this game. And hello everyone, it's Stella and Taryn from Maple University. Let's go to the classroom. In Sweet Mess Pastry Competition, players are pastry chefs competing against each other to create the tastiest and best combinations of desserts. Players will take ingredients from the bowls, frequently making a mess as they do so. Manage their kitchen's constrained storage areas. Prepare and then complete recipes and submit matching sets to gain the best awards. The game end is triggered once somebody claims a third award and the player with the highest score wins. To set up, lay out the main board with its three shuffled decks, the tools and level one and two recipes. For the recipes, deal four cards from each deck face up into a row. If you come across any event cards as you're doing this, set them off to the side and continue drawing. Then shuffle the events back into the deck. In the top right, place the three award stacks. Each should be stacked with its lowest points scoring awards on the bottom and its highest on the top. Beneath the board, lay out the ingredient bowls in a randomized 4x4 grid. One bowl will represent the super ingredients and it must be placed within the middle 2x2 part of the grid. And the other 15 represent the six basic ingredients. The bowls are double sided, each of them showing a hint of what you'll see on the other side. But you must set them up in such a way that three of the basic ingredients have three bowls and three of the basic ingredients have two. On each ingredient with three bowls, place one matching ingredient token per bowl. For each ingredient with two bowls, place two matching ingredients per bowl. And place one super ingredient on its bowl. The three leftover tiles showing the golden token are placed like so, so that they somewhat interlock the pattern of the bowls. Leave this tile in the box, it's used for a variant. Create the supply of golden tokens. Nearby place the toke tile and place one golden token onto each of these four spaces. Give each player a player board, an awards shelf, a reserve token, one of these action markers which is placed into this central action slot, a chef card which is double sided and has a different special power on each side, the player must choose which side to play with at the start of the game, and a tool card from the deck. You are allowed to look at your tool card but it is not yet in your hand, you'll place it in this slot to the left of your player board. And we'll learn how you gain it from there to your hand a little bit later. Each player gains two starting ingredient tokens, one of which is a super ingredient and one which matches the favoured ingredient of the chef card. These must be placed into legal slots in the player's storage area and we'll learn what constitutes legal later in the video. Choose a first player and you're now ready to play. Sweet Mess Pastry Competition is played in turns, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table. On your turn, you'll resolve these four phases indicated on your player board from left to right. These are taking actions, reserving or preparing reserved recipes, advancing recipes and claiming awards. You'll also finish with a cleanup phase. First is taking actions. The first step is that you must move your action marker from its current location to one of the other two locations. Then take one of the two actions indicated in your new box. Then optionally, and only if you have collected some golden tokens and choose to spend one, take the other action in the same box. That's indicated by this icon here. There are several ways to gain golden tokens, but this is one of the main ways to spend them. And you may hold at most 9 golden tokens at any time. The three left side actions all relate to gaining ingredients. 
These two mean to gain ingredients from a single ingredient bowl, and this action means to gain leftovers. To take from a bowl, choose any one of the 16 bowls and then take as many ingredients from that bowl as you can legally store. Your storage area is precisely restricted. You have seven total storage slots spread across three columns. Each slot in the left column can hold one ingredient and each ingredient must be different. The second column has a single slot which can hold up to four of the same ingredient. And your third column has two slots, each holding up to two matching ingredients, with each slot having to hold a different type of ingredient. Do note that this is the deluxe edition of the game. The standard layout has these same seven slots, but in a different order. Once you've chosen a space to place an ingredient, you cannot move it from that space and you cannot freely discard it. The only way to take it out of that slot is to spend it legally. It's up to you to manage your storage to make sure that you can get the most of the ingredients you're picking up. So there are a few ways these could be placed. If the player wants to take the cream, then the only slot that it can go into is this one that accommodates four matching tiles, since there's already cream present in each of the other columns. The two jellies could, in theory, be split between the single column and the pairs column, or they could both be placed into a single pairs slot. That would leave this candy piece to go in one of the single ingredient slots. However, the player may not wish to use this entire four ingredient slot for a single cream, especially already holding a lot of other cream, and may wish to put the jelly tokens into here in anticipation of gaining more of them on a future turn. Whatever happens, if you cannot or do not wish to place some of the tiles from the bowl into your storage, then you must leave them on the bowl. Note that super ingredients are considered wild when you're storing them. I could store one of these by itself, or I could freely store it in a slot with another ingredient. Here, for example, calling it chocolate. If, as the result of this action or any other, you take the last ingredient from a bowl, you now do a partial refill of ingredients in the field, which is known as making a mess. Take a set of tokens from the supply, matching the type of bowl you emptied. Starting in the bowl above the one that was emptied, and going clockwise, add one ingredient to each orthogonally adjacent bowl. Then, again starting at the 12 o'clock position and going clockwise, add one ingredient to each diagonally adjacent leftover space. A bowl may hold at most four ingredients, and a leftover space may hold at most one. So if you're meant to add to a space which is full, skip over it. If through the process of making a mess, you run out of tiles of the right type from the supply, then determine the next available type of ingredient clockwise around this table, and continue filling spaces with those. Once you've finished making a mess, Flip the newly empty bowl over to its other side, changing the mix of ingredients. Do note that this does also apply to the super ingredient bowl, and when you flip it over, the other side will be empty. This still behaves like any other bowl. It can be filled up by other messes, but when it's emptied, it makes no mess, it just flips back over. The other action which lets you pick up ingredients is the take leftovers action. Choose any one of the four leftover tile displays and then take all of the tiles on it, adding it to your storage in the same way. Once again, you'll need to leave behind any ingredients you can't legally store. If your chosen leftovers includes a visible golden token icon, then gain one from the supply. You can choose to take leftovers from an empty tile, in which case all you would get would be the golden token. Tool cards provide some abilities which can help you through the game, and by taking this action, you can draw a new tool card from the deck. When you draw a new tool card, you can look at it, but you must place it to the left of your player board in this location here, as you did in setup. It's not yet in your hand. It will enter your hand only at the end of your turn, 
and therefore you won't be able to spend or play it until your next turn. Each tool card shows icons representing two bonus actions. You may play tool cards on your turn and may play as many of them as you wish. To play it, reveal the card, choose one of its two actions, resolve it in full and then discard it. Many of these cards allow you to gain or swap ingredients and you must be able to store your new ingredients to take the action in full. Next we'll look at the three steps involved in turning your newly collected ingredients into award winning desserts. These come across a range of actions and turn phases. The steps are preparing recipes, advancing recipes towards completion, and cashing them in for awards. With this action, you may prepare either one or two recipes, one after the other. Choose any one of the eight face-up recipes to prepare. Take the card, and if it's come from one of these two right-hand slots, gain one golden token. Pay the recipe's ingredient cost. In this case, it's two candies, one jelly, and two other ingredients which match each other but do not match the other ingredients in the recipe. The cost is paid by returning ingredients from your storage. And through the process of paying, you may treat a super ingredient as if it were any other ingredient, and you may use your chef's card ability at most once per recipe. On one side of the card, this will let you treat your favoured ingredient as if it were any other ingredient. And on the reverse side, it will let you spend a super ingredient as if it were two of your favourite ingredient. Right now, I could pay for this recipe with my one jelly, my candy and super ingredient fulfilling this requirement, and this chocolate and chef's favourite ingredient as this requirement. In this scenario, I could spend these ingredients as shown and spend this one as if it were two cream to fulfill the requirements. Note that this exchange is done while paying for preparing the recipe. You don't need to store the ingredients which come out before using them to pay. A super ingredient can change what it represents between your storage and the recipe. For example, here it's being stored as cream, but then it converts to candy when paying for this recipe. Now move your newly prepared recipe into any one of the empty slots below your bench, which could include the number zero slot. Claim the immediate reward printed on that space. Finally, be aware that by preparing the recipe, you have scored its points. You cannot lose these, and they will count towards your end of game score. The next step of the process is to advance your prepared recipes. Think of it as cooking them. When you take this action, or resolve this step of your turn, advance all of your prepared recipes one step along this track. When one is advanced from the zero position, it comes off the track and is now considered completed. If there is a bonus in this blue banner, this will be on all the level one recipes, then you gain this bonus now. When you reach the awards phase of your turn, you may now optionally use the icons on your completed recipes only to win awards. There are two types of awards, top shelf and bottom shelf. You need three matching icons to qualify for a top shelf award and two to qualify for a bottom shelf. Suppose here I decided I was going to claim two awards, a top shelf confectionery and a bottom shelf pie award. For each award, flip face down the recipes you need to pay for the icons. From the main board, take the top remaining award tile of the matching type. Now add it to the matching space of your award shelf. Any award will be worth the points printed on it, whether it's on your top or bottom shelf. A top shelf award will be worth a bonus 5 points. A bottom shelf award grants you an immediate bonus from the toke tile. Choose any one of the four bonus actions printed, resolve it now, and if the golden token placed during setup is still there, take that as well. Through the game, you can have at most three top shelf awards, each of a different type, and at most two bottom shelf awards, also non-matching. 
you may spend any two icons, matching or non-matching, as a wild icon. So these two cards could be flipped to score the three cake bonus. Preparing, advancing and claiming is the main way to complete your recipes. But there is one other pathway which uses phase two of your turn, either to reserve a recipe or prepare a reserved recipe. When your turn reaches this phase, you may optionally take one of the two actions. To reserve a recipe, you must spend one tool card from your hand, discarding it without resolving any of its actions. Choose any one of the eight face-up recipes, and if you choose one from the right-hand column, gain the golden token. Place your reserved recipe into an empty slot below your bench, and claim the immediate bonus. Then place your reserved token on the recipe. The two differences between doing this and preparing a recipe proper are that you have not yet spent the ingredients and you have not yet unlocked the victory points. Reserved recipes will be advanced in the same way as prepared recipes. In this phase, if you already have a reserved recipe, you may now prepare it. And to do this, you spend the ingredients required for it in the usual way and remove the reserve token. You gain no other immediate benefits for doing this, but you have now unlocked its victory points. If a reserved recipe ever advances past the zero space without being completed, then it is removed from the game. You get your reserve token back, but you lose the chance to score the points or complete that card. And so all of those steps make up your turn sequence. First, you'll choose a new action space, resolve one of its actions, and optionally pay a golden token to resolve the other. Then optionally spend a tool card to reserve a recipe, or prepare a reserved recipe. Then you must advance all your prepared or reserved recipes, and then you may claim awards. Finally, there is a cleanup phase. If you gained any tool cards during this turn, including the one gained in setup, Add them to your hand, and if you now have more than three tool cards, discard down to three. Refill the recipe market by sliding all cards as far to the right as they can go, and then redrawing from the top of the deck. Then if you drew any event cards, resolve the event, discard it, and continue drawing from the deck until the entire display is filled with recipes. This section on the back of the rulebook describes all of the event effects. One way you can build your capabilities is by storing ingredients in jars. And anytime you gain this jar icon, it allows you to take the storage jar action. Pay any one ingredient from your storage and then take a storage jar showing that same ingredient, placing it into its slot on the right hand side of your board. If you pay a super ingredient, you can choose to take any type of stored ingredient, and you may have at most one of each type. Stored ingredients provide a permanent one resource discount of that type for each recipe you fulfill going forward. That means this player could fulfill this recipe for a total ingredient count of only two cream. You may not use a stored ingredient to trigger your chef's special ability, this must come from one of the ingredients tokens. As soon as any one player scores a third award, the end of the game is triggered. Finish the current round and then play one more round. Now count up your final scores. Any recipes that you reserved but failed to prepare are lost. All of your remaining recipes, whether prepared, completed, or completed and scored for awards, are flipped face up and score victory points based on what's shown in their top left corners. Score the points printed on each of your awards, plus five points for each top shelf award. Score one point for each of your storage jars, and then count up your remaining golden tokens, ingredients, and tool cards, and score one point for every three. The player with the highest score wins. If tied, whoever has the most completed level two cards wins. If still tied, completed level one cards. If still tied, total prepared recipes. And if still tied, victory is shared. There are several other modules you can use. Instead of using a standard leftovers tile, you can use one showing a super ingredient. 
meaning you would gain one of those if it were visible when you claimed leftovers from that tile. The Hands module introduces some light spatial restrictions to the rules regarding gaining your ingredients. Within the confines of the 16 bowl grid, you can consider a 3x3 hand movement grid. Each time you either pick ingredients or pick leftovers, you must first move your hand one or two steps in a single orthogonal direction. For example, from here you could go here, 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 or here. While from this space I'd have the option of moving here, 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 or here. You may freely move into or through other players' hands. You're then restricted only to picking ingredients from one of the four bowls diagonally adjacent to your hand, or from a leftovers tile which is adjacent to a bowl which is adjacent to your hand. The Bench Benefits module adds some new tactics around optimising your storage. You'll shuffle up this deck with the ingredients on top, then deal a second card with its ingredients on top, and a third card flipped over to the bonus side. If at the end of your turn you have these four ingredients in your storage, and this must be in the form of the specific ingredients, it cannot be any sorts of wild or storage jars, then gain the benefit on the right hand card. You do not have to spend the resources. Now shuffle the cards along to create a new benefit and a new objective. Finally, there is a solo mode where you'll compete in a two player game against a robot chef who takes ingredients and has actions controlled by a deck of bot cards. And that's how to play Sweet Mess Pastry Competition. Thank you so much for watching. Your like and comments are much appreciated. Subscribe to see what's coming and let us know what games you've been playing. See you next time.